okay. <clears throat> All right, so, um, hi and uh, welcome everyone to um, this short stream. Uh, I'm mainly, I'm uh, <clears throat> mainly doing this to um, partially to test out my stream setup, uh, but also just to, um, you know, thought this would be a good idea to, good opportunity to uh, read the Guilty Gear Strive uh, developer uh, blog post here, uh, which is in response to uh, the recent beta, which they had, uh, <clears throat> I believe in, uh, it was in early or mid-April, so about like um, about a month and a half ago. So yeah, so a month and a half ago, there was the beta. Um, things didn't really go well in a lot of, with a lot of things, and they had a, a survey that people who played the beta um, answered uh, about different kinds of topics, and this seems to be their response, and this comes uh, as like the first actual real uh, response to the Strive uh, to the uh, Strive um, survey questionnaire, um, and also comes after the um, recent delay announcement, which they delayed the game till next year when it was planned for this year. So yeah, it's a uh, <clears throat> uh, a lot of things changed with the at least the. Uh, the plan, the plans for the game itself. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, greetings from the dev team at Arc System Works. This is the beginning of a new project titled Developers Backyard. Our goal is to create a conversation between us here and the players. Blah blah blah. blah. Developer in intent as well as information about our plans going forward. So, uh, <clears throat> it seems like this will be the way to. Uh, get their message and their like intentions and uh, ideas uh, forward to the players. Uh, it seems like um, you know. I think especially now with the whole like uh, COVID nineteen pandemic, there'll be less opportunities for um, artists to get hands on and get actual live players uh to test the game maybe um uh, you know they can't have location tests and uh put the game out at expos and all that so uh they're definitely gonna rely more on uh using more uh, <coughs> uh you know using the uh blog posts like these to communicate with the player base so, statistics from the Stry beta. We run abbreviated as GGST, so I guess that's the official abbreviation. Guilty Gear Super Turbo. Hmm. Appreciate everyone who took the time to fill out the survey. So, yeah, so 95% of the people playing the beta have played Guilty Gear before, and 54%. Uh, uh, it's their fi favorite fighting game series. Um, this is my, you know, this might not actually um, sound that good, I think. But I guess this is a beta, so it's gonna be mostly people interested in Guilty Gear to to be trying it out. Because um, from my understanding, the uh, a lot of the point of uh, Guilty Gear Strive's design is to get people who either don't play Guilty Gear or don't play it seriously or is not Guilty Gear is not their favorite fighting game series or um, I think even uh, 
they mentioned that they want to entice people that don't even play fighting games and uh, at least with the um <clears throat> with the uh hold up uh, uh with the <clears throat> With the left uh, percentage, it's not that great. You know, it's just having 5% of uh, people actually new to Guild Gear. But um, I guess it being like a closed beta, that's probably what you expect. You'd expect. And 54%, 54.1% uh, being uh, Guild Gear being their favorite series, I guess. Um, um, that's about, uh, that seems like, uh, you know, uh, I think right now with how Arx is, is doing, like a lot of their being like, you know, undoubtedly the most prolific, uh, fighting game developer right now, you know, they made so many fighting games this, this generation, like from, uh, Starting with uh, Guilty Gear Exard sign, uh, Blaze Blue, um, uh, <coughs> Blaze Blue, uh, 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 Cross Tag, and uh, uh, <coughs> what was <that? laughs> I forgot? <laughs> yeah, um, and the mainline entry, and uh, you know, Triangle Ball, Fighter Z, uh, Grand Blue. Uh, in addition to assisting others like uh, uh, Undernight Inbirth, at least publishing the game in uh, in Japan, and uh, maybe helping them out with uh, some of the ports and uh, PC ports, and uh, <coughs> uh, of course Grand Blue. Uh, so yeah, they've been pretty prolific. So um, I think they might have gotten like a pretty good new audience. And uh, particularly, I think with uh, Dragon Ball uh, Fighter Z and uh, maybe Grand Blue, and I think a lot of them were like, "Oh yeah, uh, this is their main line series, so I may as well like try it out." And that's why they got these tribe beta. Plus, it's you know, it's like the big new fighting game, so a lot of people would try it. Uh, so it's about fifty-fifty, which is, you know, uh, yeah. Most used characters. That's uh, yeah. It's it's pretty obvious. It's Sol Kai Mei. Um, this is actually the same order they were revealed. I think, at least in terms of all the characters, returning characters. Yeah, Sol and Kai in the first trailer, Mei in the third. So, they definitely know who the popular characters are, uh, and yeah. Uh, but also the fact that Soul was kind of obviously ridiculously good in the Strive beta, that might have helped make him more popular. Uh, yeah. So we get into the b biggest, like the first big, like kind of info dump uh, here, which is the most requested uh, character, and uh, <clears throat> a. There's like clear winners with uh, Biken and Johnny being uh, first and second place in nearly all regions except Japan. Uh, so yeah, I expect Johnny to if, if they're gonna work on if it's not already been decided, they might decide to add Johnny in the game uh, and probably Biken. Uh, it's interesting that uh, <clears throat> in the North America region, uh, there are no non-exalt characters. <laughs> so it's all like just uh, exalt characters uh, with no characters that were, you know, left behind in uh, XX or X and Core. Uh, so no testament who appeared in the Europe and Asia uh, uh, top 10. Uh, no Angie. Uh, oh yeah, except uh, for Bridget, I guess. Yeah, I guess I missed Bridget. Yeah, so um, I guess that I guess my point is out of the window now. So yeah, that didn't work. But yeah, um, it seems j clear that Japan has more attachment to older characters like uh, Angie, Order Soul, and uh, Bridget. 
than other regions. Although there's some, but like at least Testament and Bridget appeared. Uh, <coughs> um, just one, uh, I think, crucial info with the way that they did the uh, 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 questionnaire for the uh, character quests. It was kind of uh, like an unlimited choice, basically. So you can just click you know you can choose in one character or all of them and you're free to do that and what that means is um, uh, if you say you really 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 want Abba back if that's like oh she's my favorite character ever she's my favorite getting your character and like I really want her back uh, so you choose her and then you would be like okay I have more choices so uh i like biken so i'm gonna choose biken and then i like johnny i'm gonna choose John johnny and then that's it uh all three choices would be considered like equal even though you kind of would much you know would you know you there's nothing weighing those characters uh, in differently there's no weighted choices there's no like you can't rank uh characters as like Oh, my number one requested character is Abba. My number two is Biken. My number three is Johnny. It's all just like equally the same. So <clears throat> in some sense that might explain why, for example, or like that's one way to interpret why Biken is so popular is uh, she's a lot of players like favorite, like um, second or third like sub. Uh, plus she kind of came in uh, uh, plus she's like I mean she is a uh, mainstay in terms of like being like a classic get gear character being there since the first game um, <clears throat> so uh, plus she's a cool design and all that but um, I think that might have affected the I think that's something important to consider with the rankings because if a lot of people choose her as they're like second or third choice it wouldn't you know it would lead to her being the most popular character so it's just something to consider with the ranking so um which is kind of so which is kind of maybe unfortunate for the lesser popular characters because like you know that tends to be like the case that, that if you usually want a lesser known character it's probably someone that you actually really like a lot so and that doesn't come into the uh, way the survey data is constructed and yeah I also no Venom sucks I hope Venom's in style but we'll see most guys said she was number one 2013 oh yeah I think this uh, 2013 uh, 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 <clears throat> The uh, request might have been the one they did uh, for sign, I think. Um, before it came out, uh, or maybe it was in. Uh, they kind of did the. Uh, I think they did two surveys. Uh, one before Exalt came out, which is I think this is what the 2013 one refers to. Oh hey there, yeah, God Press, yeah, yeah. If it's uh, 2013, then that's before sign, yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, no, 2013, that's definitely before Sign even came out. It was probably just when Sign was uh, probably announced in like a reveal trailer or something. Uh, yeah, so he was popular, even though that didn't come into play with how they chose the cast and it didn't come up with, uh, it didn't come into play with like DLC or updates or anything. Which is, you know, weird. Uh, but I'm pretty sure they did the second uh, survey. Uh, it was mainly in the Japanese uh, uh, arcade scene. Where, like, if you play Exod and <clears throat> use the, I think, the arcade code or something like that. And then you can choose uh, who do you want to be added in, uh, I think, Revelator. And that led to the choice of Dizzy. I think, yeah, I, if I remember, it was exactly when they 
uh, either released or showcased uh, Revelator and uh, Jacko and Johnny and Jam were shown. And then they were like, okay, we're going to work on uh, <coughs> uh, the next DLC character. Uh, and that was based on the um, uh, results of the survey, which was Dizzy, which is how Dizzy came out. Like, um, <coughs> at least uh, around the year after Revelator, uh, yeah, yeah, around the year, thanks, uh, yeah, around the year after Revelator came out in arcades, and it came out in, I think, late 2015, I think it was late 2015, yeah, and then early 2016, it came as a demo, and then mid 2016, uh, hey there, uh, Futeki, how's it going? Yeah, so mid 2016 is when it kind of got the Evo, post Evo patch, I remember that, because like, Matchable won Evo 2016, and then like within hours, uh, Matchable was like first place, Mito was second, and then within hours, uh, Sin and uh, uh, Johnny were nerfed. But it kind of didn't, I guess, matter because Johnny was still good, and you know, Sin is fine. Yeah, so that's the, uh, I guess, results. Um, okay. Here are the evaluations for each aspect of Strive. Uh, so this is a score out of five. So let's just go with the best. So the best is like the highest. Did they say anything about the huge damage? Oh, they they said like a lot of things. I'm gonna go through them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you're correct. Yeah. So there's a they 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 actually mentioned something here in the uh, like late in the <clears throat> yeah. Here we go. About future developer backyard volumes for the first volume, blah blah blah, blah we'll keep shouting. And then they say here uh, upcoming online events. There's the summer of gaming and new game plus expo. We'll be revealing new Guilty Gear uh, Strive footage at these events. So being that it's two weeks apart, I'm sure they're gonna have something for each, like something something uh, new for each uh, event. So they're not just gonna be like. Oh, we're gonna release a trailer, and then two weeks later, we'll give you like, oh, remember that trailer <laughs> that we released two weeks two weeks ago? We're just gonna release it again. No, so it's definitely gonna be uh, probably two character reveals for each event, if not more. Uh, maybe they'd do something with like features and stuff like that. But anyways, let's get back to the um, evaluation. So the highest. Uh, Scored one is character visuals, which is pretty obvious. The game does look really pretty, and uh, the model design is like, uh, you know, it's uh, perfect. You know, it's, there's nothing, I don't think anyone complained about that. And then character animations, it's, you know, close to that. It's pretty good. Um, <clears throat> there's some aspects with it being weird, where like the, uh, whenever the slowdown yeah, whenever the slowdown happens, it it can, like they they kind of do something with the, um, I think the way they designed the animations here, they actually made them more like, in a standard 3D way, like in in Exart, they really wanted to keep it to keep ha you know, um, yeah, it's a pure uh true evaluation indeed yeah uh, yeah, so in Exile, I think they intentionally wanted to keep it super close to the 2D sprite, uh, <clears throat> you know, legacy of uh, Get the Gear. But in Strive, this seemed to be stretching uh, the animations out and making them more, uh, I guess, more fluid and more uh, um, 3D-like. So, and that comes in with the slowdown and stuff like that. But, you know, it's, it's pretty great. OST music, I really like the music. Uh, I guess the fact that it's lyrics can be annoying, but uh, I still like the lyrical themes. Maybe having non-lyrical versions for each, the each uh, character theme would be cool. And I don't know, there's chances that other characters would be would not have lyrical themes and all that. <clears throat> and then uh, battle system. Hmm. The thing with this is that it's, you know, battle system is such a catch-all term that... Yeah, OST is a... I, I like the OST, yeah. Um, 
so yeah battle system is a pretty catch-all term the you know there's a lot of things under the battle system that i like and some of it i don't like so but you know i guess it averages out to 3.5 3.55 something like that um Next, we have online matches, which is different than online lobbies. I guess this is the net code of when you're actually playing a match, which, I mean, they're going to disregard anyway because it's going to be rollback net code, not delay-based. So this information is not going to matter because it's already, you know, uh, they're changing the net code anyway. So, yeah, uh, UI... HUD design, yeah, this is an issue that um, a lot of people had, and they kind of addressed uh, since the initial gameplay reveal uh, late last year, and <clears throat> so they addressed that, and then they 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 changed it for the beta. Uh, by the way, I didn't like the new design of Eddie. <clears throat> Someone like Black Spirit from the game Black Desert. That one. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. UI HUD. Yeah, I think the I think people are. Uh, what happened is I think people liked that they improved it, but maybe it's not where it needs to be. So maybe that's why. Maybe you know sometimes you know when you make something so bad, and then you improve on it just a bit. That kind of gives a better impression to some people than if you just straight up make make that you know thing at that level. So like, if you make like an average thing, people will just consider it like average. But if you make a very bad thing and then improve it to average, people will consider that like pretty good because you know it's a very it's, you know it's it's about the uh, change. I guess the positive change is taken into you know people like that. Uh, but that's, you know, my impression. Uh, so, and they talk about this a lot. Um, yeah, and online lobbies, yeah, it's terrible. I don't think anyone at all liked the way they did that. And that's not even speaking about how it just didn't work at all. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> alright, answers to your concern. We saw many of your opinions on the game through the survey. In this section, uh, Director Akira Katano and General Director Daisuke Shiwutari will answer uh, opinions and concerns. Uh, Mr. Ishiwatari, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for the close beta. We had each member of the development staff, each member, everyone, look at your survey answers. We'll keep all of your valuable opinions in mind as we continue our work on GDST. Our goal today is to respond to your opinions and concerns on behalf of the team. Alright, there's something I'd like to share before that. So yeah, this is, they're talking right now about the, I think they should focus on the battle system online. Ah, uh, I mean, they're gonna have to change them all. Like, it doesn't matter whether they, if they're gonna work on all of them, they have to work on all of them. Uh, you know, it's, I don't know how, you know, which aspect takes more development time than the other, but, you know, I hope they consider, you know, dealing and improving all of them together. Uh, <clears throat> regardless of how much time and resources uh, addressing each aspect. Um, needs so uh, like this is something that Ishiwatari and Arc System have been telling talking about uh, uh, with uh, specifically with the uh, strive it being not being like a continuation of previous titles you know so this is like the thing they kind of been uh, <clears throat> repeating whenever they you know anyone uh, addresses concerns about the game and they're like, oh, this is a new game, so we, this isn't, we're not gonna trying to make Exart or Axing Core or whatever. So, <clears throat> the basis of our development to create everything is to create the basis of our development is to cre create everything to be completely new. 
uh, well, this is one. I think this is the thing that they just state that yes, our game is completely new. Even though, I honestly don't think that this is like something that is at least true. Like, I think one issue with how they're like dealing with Guilty Gear Strive is that uh, they just state some stuff as facts and just take that as like absolute truth. You're like. Okay, no, this game is completely new. Even though a lot of it is like not that new at all. It's just like it's 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 like a game. I mean, I don't want to get my general opinion right now, but the game is basically like designed by subtraction. It's all like taking stuff from like, you know, it's just like um it's like uh it's like based on Exalto X and core or stuff like that, but you know, taking out some stuff and then calling it completely new. So um, it's weird because like they want to reinvent the wheel and then they end up just having the same wheel that they had before. But, but then they're like, oh wait, this is the same wheel we had before. So why not just arbitrarily take out some stuff so that it would not be exactly the same? And anyway, so. But we'll keep that in mind anyway, so <clears throat> gameplay of uh, Guilty Gear Strive. The damage is too high. Hmm. Uh, central idea behind this title is you can deal big damage without memorizing long combos. Okay. We made the damage extreme in the beta to get the idea that idea across. For the game's release we'll be adjusting. So, um <clears throat> Did they mention anything about the story? Um like not in this blog, but they just mentioned that uh, the story of Strive takes place like after Exalt, uh, Rev Two, shortly. It's not a long time after, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, the damage uh, in <clears throat> and the beta was pretty high, like, uh, and it's most ridiculous with uh, I think uh, Sol. Same wheel with broken suspicion. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think it was most extreme with Soul and with basically with Chip uh, when he, you know, when he eats that damage at least. And, like, yeah, sure, it makes it easy to for people to dish, to dish uh, big damage pretty quickly. But what that ends up being is that uh, people who pick up the game can dish out pretty big damage, but then people who have the game and then labbed it for uh, the first three days of the beta, yeah, uh, yeah, they already like found even more ridiculous combos. So like the stuff with combos is like it scales based on uh, uh, player familiarity and uh, advancing skill levels. So yes, people who you know. Because the problem with saying something is big damage, it's uh, <clears throat> it's not really a quantitative s statement that is exact. You know, you're just saying this damage is big, but what is big damage? How much is that? How much is big damage? Big damage, you know. Um, <clears throat> it's just uh, you know, is it f is it thirty percent out of every confirm? It's not or like. 50% from a normal confirm, but like 70% from a specific, uh, you know, starter with some resources used, you know, um, yeah, so like, if you just, like, what ended up being is that, like, you do, like, souls, like, uh, close slash, fast slash, five heavy revolver, and that does, like, 40%. And what that means is that, okay, then you can lab more of it. Yeah, I know. It's, uh, I guess a lot of people like Venom, but they might have chosen other characters. I, I talked about this earlier. Uh, it's because of the way they did the survey that might have affected some characters. Um, so yeah, big damage. Uh, so, like... This type of thing kind of scales and grows exponentially because, like, we've all like quickly we've seen how like damage gets ridiculously big when you factor in like weak health characters like Chip, plus even uh, 
uh, <clears throat> plus uh, risk, which we didn't even like, you know, get into that. So, like, if damage is already big, then what is the idea, what is the point of risk? So, like, uh, people getting hit is already gonna be pretty punishing in terms of damage, and then you add risk to that, and then <clears throat> damage becomes even more ridiculous. And yeah, so yeah, but from the way Mr. Kitano uh, mentioned it, it seems like they kind of made it. Ex- like extreme uh, for like uh, just for like a message you know to send out the message that yeah this game is the damage is big you know way so it's not like how they're gonna have the game at the end they just wanted it to be like that so that you know it'll catch people's attention I guess and maybe that's that's you know true like Having higher damage from a PR standpoint might actually be smart, you know, because like, you know, high damage does get people more hype and be like, oh, look at this damage, look at poor Chip, he died from two wild throws. <laughs> yeah, and that does get shared and clicks and all that, so maybe. Um, but damage stuff, you know, it, it, in balance, you know, that can be balanced up later. It. But it's very much like, uh, <clears throat> um, I think it's dependent on a lot of other things. And it's it's pretty good that they had immediately after that the thing about uh, Gatling combos. So, Gatling blah blah blah, first combo, normal moves into other normals. This is like, the way they uh, talk about this is pretty confusing. So, uh, Katano says... Uh, player could cancel many normal moves into the account with the relative freedom okay and strive we made restrictions so that it's more difficult to combo into damaging moves from fast small normals so if you start from a 2p or a 2k then your options are limited and it's more difficult to combo from there into damaging buttons like 5h or 2h or if you have a 6H or whatever. <clears throat> um, by doing so, we've introduced a greater emphasis on choosing which normally move, move you start. So that means like, um, see, this is one of those things where like, um, they kind of state stuff like that, even though, you know, it's not like, <clears throat> this wasn't true in uh, previous Guild Gears. So, um, the way I, I kind of talked about this in the blog post uh, that I made for the uh, game, uh, <clears throat> it's just that instead of... So, when you start the combo previously in Exalt with uh, 2k or 2p or uh, something that's not like a close slash immediately, uh, it adds proration so that... Uh, in addition to just the standard combo scaling, uh, just the the combo itself would not do as much. So if you start from a 2k, you'll have 70% proration mostly, at least with Venom. So that would significantly re- reduce damage. But the combo route itself would normally be the same. So uh, with Venom, if you do if you start the combo from 2k or 5k. Uh, or even 2p or 5p, you generally just go from there to close slash. And then it's exactly the same with even if you start with close slash. So you get then you go with the, you know, the standard uh, crouching or standing confirm. Uh, but it doesn't matter whether you start with 2k or 2p or 5p or 5k. Usually the route after that is pretty much identical except for some weirdness and stuff like that but usually pretty much identical and uh the only change is the damage but the route itself the execution the input it's the same so in, in some sense that is pretty intuitive because you just remember the close slash route and then that's it you just go from there uh but right now the way they deal with it here is instead of changing the the proration they they have 
they force it to change to, to learn new routes so <clears throat> if you start from a 2k you have very limited options uh, you can't combo to any slash or you can't cancel to any slash or uh, heavy slash button and you just you're forced to use uh, either sweep immediately or go with 6p or if you have a 6k that can be comboed or 6h that can be comboed maybe uh, <clears throat> Uh, but it's dependent on that button and a lot of 6H's and 6K's are not fast enough to combo from like a weak fast button like a 2K so that limits your combo options. <coughs> that is, and that, we're not even talking about uses it, uses of it in uh, uh, block strings. So uh, <coughs> yeah the way that's not using you know uh, the limited options also affect it's uses in uh, block strings and all that so um but it seems like yeah you just have to know right now the okay this is a punish with uh you know you got if you go with the 2k then you have to know the route for that if you go with a uh, slash then you have a completely different route and stuff like that yeah so <clears throat> this change makes it difficult to put experience from previous titles and strive okay we've heard many concerns and criticism from fans in addition we've heard the opinion that being able to get a combo simply by pressing each button and automate combos sim simple meaning that Jesus strive is more difficult okay I'm glad that they got that um, point because it seems like a pretty important and uh, intuitive point you know the magic series if you like punch kick slash heavy slash uh, sweep you know that is a Gatling route uh, <clears throat> one important concept is placing, placing greater importance on choosing your moves based on the current situation. I do think it's more difficult in that sense that muscle memory won't really work out. But there should be fewer mechanics for newer players to learn before they can enjoy playing the match. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense. So are they gonna lower down the ridiculous? Yeah, yeah, they're probably gonna lower down. Like they, uh, basically, Katano said that they made the high, the damage high, so that it gives the message that the damage in this game is gonna be high, and it grabs people's attention, even if it's not gonna be at that level when the game comes out. And I imagine it's not gonna be that high. It'll be, you know, it'll, be, it'll still, you know, the, with the way they constructed combos, I think. Damage has to be higher than Exalt, uh, but they just, you know, at what level and that stuff is we're gonna see. <clears throat> so, uh, Mr. Shoshari, Mr. Mr. Shiwatari, concept is placing great importance on yeah. Doing. So yeah, it's more difficult that muscle memory. Okay, but there should be fewer mechanics for new player before they can enjoy playing matches. Um, this seems like a thing that just, they just they just stated and just uh, kind of took as truth, and I'm not sure the anything about the games like mechanics come into play when you're doing like the standard like magic route. Like if you're learning the game, you'll be like, oh, you can just press punch kick slash heavy and dust or down dust and all of it would cancel, even no necessarily not all of it will combo and or that you know by the time you get to heavy slash you might get pushed out or whatever. But that's not changed in Strive, so uh, it's just weird, you know. Uh, like having to explain to people that oh slash and heavy slash they cancel uh, from you know. You know into each other but you know it's only from slash to heavy slash and then uh, with two p's they can only cancel to dust but with 2k you can cancel to dust and uh, command moves and it's uh, or no wait with 2p you can't actually cancel to dust you can't cancel to sweep or the 5d but with 2k you can you can cancel 2k to 2d or 5d and uh, with 2p and 2k you can cancel to command normals it, like that takes like the, I think that needs like 
by itself you need to write or like you need to state way more stuff to explain how you know the Gatling system works in Strive than in uh, in Exar than previous Guilty Gear to be like you know I don't know uh, and the problem is it seems like Ishwatar is thinking that the reason people think it's easier is because it's a thing that people are familiar with with in previous games even though the magic series is not at all exclusive to guilty gear uh marvel games vampire savior uh a lot of anime type games you know other arcs games like dragon ball uh <clears throat> what else uh and even when uh, <laughs> even when characters like uh i think juri and when they activate or uh, I forgot how to drive um basically it's like a intuitive thing where like you know light you know weak to heavy is how you know a lot of cancel systems go about so and usually you know you can go at it you know in one way and in other games like uh, under night you can cancel into uh, uh you know you have the reverse gatling and all that so you can cancel from any button into any other button but you know not go back and stuff like that so uh, uh, the problem is I think uh, Arxis think that this is only intuitive because it's people who played previous Guilty Gears thinking that it's intuitive it's not something that is uh, I guess shared with other fighting game series or you know just f- seems more intuitive i don't know and you know it's it's it, i can understand the you know defining what is easy what is hard what is intuitive what is not intuitive when you're so within you know it's hard you know as they say it's hard to see the forest from the trees when you're entrenched in playing fighting games as your main genre or like making them as your main you know type of game you kind of don't know what is easy was it what is hard because like you've been doing this for so long and everything's second nature so i get that but i don't know if this is true or not the the fact that the only reason they would consider the gas the previous gasling roots with like uh, punch kick slash heavy slash dust uh universal route being easy is because it was only in the guilty gear games like and it's only easy for people who play Guilty Gear and I'm not sure that's true you know like I said it's in other games it's in countless fighting games it's not just in Guilty Gear <clears throat> and if it if, if, and if it is in countless fighting games then there's something to that it's something that clicks with like a lot of people uh, anyways if you think in terms of either game being simpler to play yeah oh, this is a weird statement if you think in terms of either the game being simpler to play in training mode or simpler to play in a match I would say Strive values the latter more so hmm I have no idea what that means honestly when it says that this game is simple so they're saying that Strive is simpler to play in terms of like if you just got the game and they were like okay here you go this is the first time you're playing this game you haven't even heard anything about it go and if you play a match of it it's simpler to play but if you go to training mode it's not as simple as exart it's weird and it's like <clears throat> which i don't know what like this is like another one of those statements that are like just saying and accepting as true you know and uh I'm not sure about that or about what it actually means <clears throat> but it is interesting uh, <clears throat> so in development we work with constant making the choice and timing of each and every move important in order to create room for invention and technical challenge for advanced players we're also sure to shortening the length of combos and block strings okay no oh, concept um, natural yeah but if you're limiting the choice <clears throat> then you won't you won't have a lot of options and 
that wouldn't give people a lot of choices. Like I said, if you hit them with a 2P, your options are limited. Uh, most characters, the only command, you know, the, the only universal command nor normal they have is usually the 6P. Because, you know, it's a standard, like, anti-air option that every character has. Uh, some characters have 6Ks, some characters have 6H. But a lot of them, they have their, you know, they have uh, more niche uses. Or <clears throat> uh, okay, so um, sorry about that. It seems like the just um, OBS just died on me, and I can't continue the stream. Um, so I'll try to record the rest and combine it with the stream board, and hopefully this will be on YouTube. Anyway, so uh, we just got through the combo damage uh, uh, issue, and we were just starting on the combo routes, which is uh, 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 which is the uh, the combo routes, which is the um, mainly the Gatling issue. Um, so it seems like uh, what we were talking about is uh, uh, they somehow both uh, think that the limited Gatling is kind of more... Um, what we got through is that I think they believe that the old Gatling roots, the Magic series, the PKSHD, uh, being all cancelable from P to D, uh, from anywhere, um, <clears throat> on that point, uh, it's uh, only intuitive to people who play previous Guilty Gear games and is not anything that it is a quality of the Gatling route on its own or that this same idea is in countless other fighting games whether it's other anime fighting games or Marvel games or Vampire Savior or uh, you know a lot of games like that you know that has cancelable normals usually they followed a similar route uh so they can't some, somehow change it for strive um they i don't think they they <clears throat> really explain why it's easier um it's just that you know with some stuff it seems like it's intentionally more difficult because like they want to put in more thought by having you uh like you know, remember certain routes off of uh, certain buttons. So if you start with 2K, that has a completely different route than if you start with slash and all that. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, there's like it's it's just it's weird because like um, it's 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 a lot of conflicting messages and a lot of concepts that they just believe is true. Uh, just like that and then they just take it as fact um, without really a lot of things to uh, justify why such and such is a uh, truth and so like that you know uh, <clears throat> so uh, development work concept making choice and timing technical learning combo and block strings naturally adjusting what moves combo into what including the difference of each character um, this is actually pretty um, encouraging a bit um, I think the issue is that they kind of put in these general rules they're like okay 2k can only be cancelled to sweep dust or command normals 2p can only be cancelled to command normals and this applies to every character without really looking into what works for certain characters versus others and I think generally, especially with a, a game like Guilty Gear, where like you have these intricately designed characters with like their own like unique mechanics and ideas of how to play each one. Uh, yeah, you need to design them with consideration for the, all their like tool sets, and uh, it's generally not. I don't. I don't like the idea of having this general having like. Uh, uh, having like this absolute rule 
and then just applying it to everyone. So if they're gonna adjust Gatling roots for each character, then that sounds good. Like if a character has, like one thing I noticed is they added like a lot of six slash uh, command normals, which weren't that prominent in Exart and might have been prominent in previous Guild Gear. So that might help by adding, you know, one more button that, you know, people can use uh, when they start a combo from a 2K or a 2P. Um, but, you know, they, they have to consider, you know, all the options. And I don't, yeah, and not having like a general rule that has to be forced on everyone and every character has to adapt to that, you know, I think that's a good idea. Uh, but this goes for... <clears throat> Sorry about that. It goes for not only Gatling but follow up moves and combos, blah blah blah. <clears throat> also, we are planning to increase the level of freedom with combos. Okay. So, they're gonna say that freedom is gonna be higher than previous entries. And that's their plan. While this seems contradictory, to the reduced length and the restrictions on Gatling, I believe we can make this happen through a combination of other mechanics. What other mechanics? I don't know. I don't think they mentioned it. Are they going to be new mechanics? Uh, the, they haven't revealed. I don't know. Um, we'll see. Uh, it's a hard things to. It's a hard, pretty hard thing to, um, you know, say. Um, not to mention the. Uh, with the way the <clears throat> that's something they don't actually address in this because like there's a lot of things they don't they don't address every issue here you know and you know to be fair this is just their first blog post and there's gonna be more and I imagine they wanted to focus on the main one main issues so they don't focus on uh, how wall combos affect things how uh, the fact that uh, like the new juggle system or like there's no teching and uh, because of that they kind of change things so the uh, <clears throat> there's this focus on air air uh, based combos or like in air uh, combos which is why there's seems to be less amount of jump cancelable normals and um, yeah and um, uh, so yeah, there's a lot of things that this is like uh, when they refer to like combos in general. I think that you know applies to many many things. It's not just the Gatling route. It's the Gatling route, the the juggle system, the wall system, uh, Roman cancels, uh, and what uh, combo limitation, uh, you know. Uh, what what is the combo limitation uh, mechanic they're using? Is it gravity based? Is it pushback based? Is it um, you know there's no untech, so I guess it's just gonna be gravity and pushback. The more you do the combo, uh, the longer you do a combo, the more you get pushed away. The and the quicker the the you know the the character you're comboing falls down. Uh, that seems to be the way they're maybe going about with limiting combos, and in the you know, even if it you can loop them in the wall, in the end the wall you know eventually the wall breaks, so that is you know hard cut off line for you know combo limitations. <clears throat> Anyways, um, so they're just stating that yeah we're gonna make it more free than previous entries, but not because of. Uh, the h longer combos or uh, the Gatlings, but we have other mechanics, and I'm not sure what those mechanics are. Uh, even this close view, there were many combo routes. Fortunately, however, only a limited number of routes were effective due to the extreme damage. Okay, hmm. So it seems like, uh, but you know, it seems like this is like the like whole big damage uh, thing coming back to bite them in the ass you know they're saying that um, <clears throat> there's a lot of combo routes but 
uh, because of the how some of them are clearly more damaging uh, people are just going with that sort of route which is you know it seems like um, um, you know uh, and then you know it's not always the case that you'd go for you know max damage with guilty you know there's a lot of other considerations like knockdown and corner carry and uh, <clears throat> other uh, you know if if your character depends on like secondary mechanics like coin or ball set or stuff like that and they might go for certain other combos that don't do as much damage but set up stronger oki and better co- you know corner knockdown and all that or like put you in a better position in neutral with uh, you know, w- by having like you know, leveled up Miss Final, for example. Our goal moving forward with developing the overall game balance is to make a game where each player can have distinctive play style. Okay, this is a pretty good goal to you know try to achieve. <clears throat> 3D camera movement disrupts the game pace. I think this is related to uh, mainly the counter hit issue. So, like. Sometimes the way the game does like these the big contracts, I think the ones that come from like big buttons like six H or five H or uh, I think Soul Sweep is like you know you get the camera zoom and the slowdown and just to make the kind of the game you know the situation interaction looks cool, they would actually lock kind of kind of lock the camera down so you'd have these kind of cool cinematic angles and stuff like that. Which, you know, from a viewer standpoint, it looks cool, but in a game like Guilty Gear, or like, you need to, you know, a lot of combos have, like, very fast, yeah, they have big motion, you know, so when when you're doing combos with, like, Soul, you're, like, doing a uh, revolver, or doing a bringer, which, you know, it moves him around, it moves the other opponent uh, around, so if, you, if, if Soul does, like, Counter hit 2H into Bringer, uh, you know, the, 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 the camera being locked down would make it awkward to, to, to discern what to do after Bringer. Uh, because Bringer itself moves both uh, Soul and Kai forward a bit, uh, or you know, whatever the opponent is. Uh, whoever. Uh, so, and you know, that's something that they kind of need to consider. And also, yeah, so, um, yeah. So, in this game, we're trying to more daring uh, 3D camera movement. We heard some players saying the movement gave them motion sickness. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think seeing the game in those weird angles, it can make things hard to discern. Uh, While we're working on proving this so that players can enjoy the game without unnecessary, unnecessary stress, I'd like to continue this idea of challenging ourselves to conclude new camera work. As of now, we're looking into making this work in a balanced way. So, I mean, I personally didn't have, uh, I personally, di- I like personally didn't have much of a problem with this, but um, it's good that they are addressing it. Yeah, uh, as long as like it it um, improves the way people that play the game, then that's cool. That's I think what's important. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> um, I think uh, Daigo um, Omihara said something really interesting that it keeps popping up in my mind with uh, Strive and with like a lot of fighting game, modern fighting games is that uh, sometimes they don't design the game for the people playing the game. Uh, in a lot of cases, like modern fighting games, some of them they they're designed for the people watching the game instead of people actually playing it. So like. Stuff like this, you know, as a viewer of, uh, you know, on stream or, you know, hopefully someday we're going to go back to actual <laughs> offline tournaments or st- stuff like that. So, yeah, seeing big counter hits and cool camera angles, that looks cool and hype. But but if you're actually playing the game, uh, it might make it really hard to discern. And this is not even dealing with, like, burst baits and stuff like that. So, like, if... You do a two H and it's counter hit, and then you do like the follow ups and like the rest of the combo. You're like seeing Saul and the other uh, character from like an awkward angle, and then they burst 
how would that be dealt with? How would you as a soul player know that, oh, they just bursted and I have to stop my combo so that I can block and bait, you know, bait the burst, you know. So that's something that they need to consider. So like it's not even like an issue of like, okay, if you know the route for counter hit 2H, you ultimately doesn't, wouldn't need to know what, where or, you know, or you know what you're doing you know especially in the game when they're like trying to make it more i guess uh <clears throat> i guess they're kind of trying to make combos more leveled because uh, i think there's not a lot of variations in terms of like uh air hurt boxes and weights and stuff like that uh so you know the routes for certain combos are going to be mostly the same but yeah so, you know, combos in Delta Gear need to be dynamic because while you're doing the combo, you usually need to be looking out for different stuff. Not, it's not necessarily just a one-player game. And that's like a crucial part of, uh, I think, Delta Gear, you know. Uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> so we also heard concern that some camera work, such as the effect on counter hit, impact the game space, player input and visibility. Yeah, we, t we take results to heart, working on proving the that so uh, players will be comfortable and fun while trying, still trying out new effects. So yeah, uh, this is mainly yeah, about the um, the aspect of uh, the counter hit uh, slowdown, eating up inputs, you know, that's usually the case whenever the game changes its pace. So like, uh, when you have RC slowdown or like super flashes, usually in games where like you have time stops and stuff like that that usually um eats people's you know players inputs and stuff like that and makes things hard to see sometimes and you know some people can take that in an advantage just way you know because like that's how you get uh option selects based on uh uh certain you know situations so like if you if you get uh two h and two you know if you do 2h into uh you can do you can do stuff like 2h into a certain input where like you would do something on normal hit but on counter hit because of the slowdown and stuff like that uh it would be in you know it will change into another input and uh, i don't know if they intend to have that as part of the game as a feature or not if you have these option selects then yeah uh, which is not the case in previous Guilty Gears because, you know, a counter hit would not stop the game or change the pace of it. You would not, you know, slow down the game just because it got, it got a counter hit. But if that's a thing in this game, then it could be, you know, something that could play out. You know, I'm just speculating here. I'm not sure if, you know. <clears throat> User interface. Yeah, okay. So this is a pretty big one. Uh... <clears throat> so this is like also another one of those like where they have uh, conflicting ideas uh, or like stuff that we like that only makes sense for like the first uh, like day or two of playing a game or you know at most so anyways um, yeah <clears throat> so they said that the idea of user interface in this game is different um, so the burst icon moves as the health bar drains in order to minimize the amount of eye movement. Yeah, so, <clears throat> uh, the way they did burst icon in this game is, and the fact that it moves is, it makes it so that you would know, uh, you know, just by looking at the life bar, you know, at the tip of the life bar, you would know all the information you have just from looking at that. You don't have to, uh, you know, move your eyes a lot. Like, okay, I need to look at the life bar. I, look, I need to look at the burst. I need to look at the risk, which, you know, the risk would be at... Uh, so, like, the risk would be normally, like, under the... Uh, nearby the uh, timer in Exart. And then the burst would be, like, at the... At the uh, like, at the side of the life bar. And, like, next to the character icon and then there uh, yeah and then there's the life bar which can be in, in the middle you know uh, it changes so uh 
and that's all just looking from the life part that's not even considering the tension and you know with tension they still kept it in the same position since down there you know it's as usual with most um fighter games they have the super meter down below um so it's uh yeah so like this is one idea that they're s- stating that they don't, they want to limit eye movement and then they they kind of contradict that by saying we made the risk gauge less visible to reduce the number of gauges that first time, time players uh try, you know first time players you know see so basically they're like all right we have a lot of meters you know we have a tension meter we have life you have burst uh you know and all these aspects but risk is just one meter too many and we don't want that to be easily visible we want people playing the game first time to just kind of not see that because if if that if if they see that that's what we're gonna scare them it's it's weird it's like it's kind of a cynical way to look at people playing fighting games or even trying out new fighting games it's like Oh, people, you know, they want to know, you know, they they don't want to play fighting games because characters look cool and they do do cool moves and uh, they see a character and they be like, wow, I want to play as that character and they look cool. Uh, oh, I see that combo, uh, that looks so hype and like, oh my god, that super looks insane. Blah blah blah. It's like that's those positive aspects should be the things that are, that are bringing people to the door, you know. And it'd be like, oh, it's just the risk is just that one. It's just that for some reason, risk is like, you know, the straw that scares, you know, people, you know, the straw that, you know, breaks the back, camel's back. It's the one tiny thing that it might scare people off, you know. And not, you know, because like there's a lot of things you can do with tension that... You know, there is you know there's a lot you know there's a lot of mechanics that are related with tension, defensive mechanics with instant block, with the uh, faultless defense and uh, guard cancel, Roman cancel, uh, supers, and different types of Roman cancels. You got the birth meter, you know. So why is just risk the one additional thing that they just want to hide i don't understand that it's like i don't know if if risk was such an issue why not just remove it i don't know like if, if, if why not just work around the risk mechanic if they want to make if they think the risk gauge is you know if you, they they're really being honest i guess i don't know why not just take risk out and make a game around that without risk or or maybe have that be <clears throat> displayed in a different way. Maybe display that on the, you know, you know, burst gauge or on the character itself. You know, it's kind of similar to, um, uh, what is it, uh, stun gauge. Like in Street Fighter and Capcom fighting games, they kind of, uh, they kind of work around like the stun gauge. Some games like Third Strike, there's a stun gauge in all games. There's no stun gauge, but there's definitely still stun. And then, yeah, and they sometimes they put it in. They sometimes sometimes they they take it out. And but it's a mechanic that's always there. And you know, I think in the end they just decide. You know, and with spy, this like clarity is important. It's just make everything clear instead of just saying, pretending that this mechanic doesn't exist. You know, in Street Fighter Four. We're gonna make it so that we're gonna pretend that stun mechanic doesn't work, even though it's still there and plays a pretty big important part. It's similar to how uh, guard uh, gauge works in uh, KOF actually. In, like in some KOFs, there's like guard gauge, and in other KOFs, there are there's there is no guard gauge, but you know there's still you know guard breaks if you do continue to pressure and they keep blocking, and that forms a lot of you know important you know. You know, it's an important mechanic, you know, in KOF, in a highly offensive game like KOF. So, I don't know about this idea that, like, they want to put it in, but they don't want to put it in prominently to, you know, scare people. So, 
it's there just not to scare those first time players that you know after like you know at what point would that be an issue you know if they if they're in the game and they be like you know how long would them hiding risk age be beneficial you know for like you know like first time players they're gonna play the game be like you know five days ten days and they want to learn more about about the game and eventually you know it's just like they are gonna have to learn about risk age and you better have something about risk age in your tutorial or uh training mode if you want to actually have a good game that teaches new players how to play your game then yeah you better have something to uh, <clears throat> uh teach you know you better have some mode that can teach people about all the mechanics that you put in, in the game including risk and then at that point the all the benefit you had of making risk be like so small you know just washes away it's like at that point why not just make it clear it's i don't know <clears throat> yeah then there's this issue so like they said the uh, this is the hit counter this is like the combo counter the, the combo number you know the 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 one five hits <laughs> one five one six one seven one eight one nine yeah so uh it's that you know number so they're like saying that the reason it's so big is because in previous games it was difficult to see hmm because it's usually hidden by the uh, character so uh, I think that comes out when usually it's like the combo, the combo counter would uh, be under the player doing the combo. So like in this case, if Faust is doing the combo on Kai, uh, the number would be right about here, like under Faust. I, I don't know. Yeah. So I'm sorry, but I guess I don't have the mouse uh, pointer on. But if you could just look at under uh, Faust there, it's usually. Uh, right about their most fighting games so regardless of whether Ka Faust is comboing Kai uh, facing right or facing left so I guess the issue comes up when when Faust is comboing Fa when Faust is comboing Kai while facing left uh, you know when when uh, Faust is facing left and comboing Kai on the left corner the because of the combo they might you know get obscure the number which is kind of understandable, but um, <clears throat> but like combo hit numbers are not. I talked about this in the Venom Discord a bit with uh, Void. <clears throat> Sorry, but like the actual number doesn't really matter much. It's mostly like whether you're continuing the combo or not. So like if he, and this this applies to. Uh, uh, you know, other fighting games, you know, uh, usually it's just like the important part is is the combo still going or has it been did it stop or you know, is it going to black beat or blue beat or stuff like that? Stuff or like, oh, they could have teched out, but they didn't. Yeah, that's usually the important part, you know, the actual number itself is not crucial, you know, at least that's in my opinion. I know, I know that. In some situations, it's like you have to. And it's actually it's it's pretty prominent, I think, in Guilty Gear and Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball will be like, yeah, after a certain amount of hits, you gotta, you know, you gotta consider that this, you know, uh, jump P into jump H will not combo anymore, uh, and stuff like that. So you have to, you know, switch up the route or you know, stuff like that. But that's usually not, you know that important and like that comes into play when you play more of the game and it's more about like repetition and stuff like that uh but it the, the issue is that this kind of contradicts their idea beforehand where like they said that we're not gonna have long combos in general so they're like okay we're not gonna have long combos but we're also gonna make it so that this information is so important the combo hit no hit counter that we have to like cover the whole screen with it essentially you know so that you'd know how many hits 
And it's weird, like, honestly, I don't have, like, any issue with a combo hit counter myself, because, like, I mean, it looks cool, and it do it's not that, at least, uh, distracting or, dis uh, like, uh, uh, unintuitive or, like, you know, obscuring to me, at least, but, like, I can see that being an issue, but it's, it's like, an, I think this, uh, it's more like the way they kind of, uh, contradicting themselves a bit i think it's weird i don't know yeah <clears throat> i've received many opinions looking critically at the user of face the visibility and design as of now we're still considering comments and our team is this because we just get the final design yeah all right online lobbies i think this is probably not interesting to talk about because like all the issues are all of this are so obvious and the players and i'm pretty sure right at this point the developers know what they what they know and i'm not like you know the lobbies are i'm not a fan of them but i just need them to work and yeah to be easy to arrange and not like have people overlap people like oh i want to play with you but but then some other guy comes and then i'm playing with them they'll be like no i don't want to play with my friend i don't want to play with some weird stranger who's in this lobby just because these two uh, the same place you know there's a lot of issues with that and i don't want to take long to um talk about that they also talk about it in terms of like an aesthetic of it being like 2d pixel art instead of 3d and they're just like oh we think that's more fun and we're like yeah it doesn't bother me that much but it's not a, like really an issue i just need lobbies that work and also, I would like lobbies where, like, you can see the whole lobby from at any point. I think the fact that the camera is zoomed in and you can only see, like, one, at least, you know, one quarter of the, you know, or, like, one half of the lobby, you know, uh, yeah, n not even. Like, you, you, can only, you can only see, like, one half of the lobby at any point. Like if you scroll scroll all the way to the right, you can't see the other half, and that's annoying. Cause like at least with the three D lobbies in uh, uh, Rev Two and uh, uh, I'm talking about the rooms at least, uh, you can kind of see uh, a big. You can kind of get a good glimpse on the whole lobby, or at least like a bigger chunk of it, and that's definitely the case with rooms with. Uh, private rooms you usually have view of everyone in the room at you know so that makes it visible so that you'd know that oh this person's here so i want to play with them you know stuff like that so yeah they need to address that and it seems like an obvious issue they are they are dealing with so lastly they just talk about the ui design being not rock enough and they'd be like okay they're gonna make it more rock and that's it uh so <clears throat> yeah so and then about future developer backyard volumes uh i think they're gonna so today is uh, june 1st uh i imagine they're either gonna do like more blog posts uh after the uh, uh the reveal either after the first reveal or after the second reveal uh, which seems okay so I, yeah which seems to be like you know new characters or maybe new mechanics i don't know but i'm still hopeful i'm still uh, uh optimistic a bit i mean the news of the delay is pretty good not just because of obviously you know with the covid 19 situation they're not gonna be working at full capacity at any time soon and like at this point in development it, it is like it's a obviously a pretty crucial point and they need to have everyone working on the game and if they don't want you know not being at full capacity will obviously make it harder to deliver uh at the uh, for you know the initial intended date of late 2020 so yeah, there's that aspect but i'm hopeful that they're gonna consider all our stuff into the game in terms of development and i don't necessarily like i'm not you know 
maybe I don't sound like it, but <laughs> I try to be like a bit more positive and like, yeah, sure, if you're gonna try to make a new game, then, you know, go for it. But honestly, I don't think they are. I think they, they, they I don't think they're really trying to, you know, like, you know, I mentioned this in the first part of the video, but like, they, this is like, uh, a lot of this game is not that new or not that uh, drastically different from like standard Guild Gear. From what I see, it's like so far it's just Guild Gear, but with like a bunch of mechanics and Gatling roots and stuff taken out. So, and it's just I guess replaced with kind of an interesting Roman Castle mechanic that is honestly mostly an expansion of Exalt and uh, big damage. And like kind of more focused grounded uh, combo routes and stuff like that. And uh, and then the wall mechanic, which they do not talk about here at all. And I don't know if, if the other, um, if they're going to make another uh, blog post that like maybe talks about, you know, there's other issues like the wall combos. The, I mean, it's not an issue. It's more like, you know, there's other aspects that I hope they explain like wall combos and uh the way air hits you know kind of uh, the yeah there's no un you know taking from the air you know and uh the way the uh, the the fact that you can unblock everything uh when you're airborne and in some aspects you know if you block a dp while you're in the air uh, it pushes you so far it literally pushes you full screen away and it makes dps safe on air block yeah, and be like, yeah, so stuff like that, and stuff with the instant block, kind of reduce reducing the amount of, uh, like you know, reducing the kind of types of reward you get from an instant block, to just being like a meter reward, which, uh, kind of makes it less interesting and it's more like a, kind of a, yeah, I, I talked about this in the blog post, but. Yeah, so, and some of that stuff they did talk about with the, um, they had the exhibition <clears throat> at the Arcade Expo uh, with uh, a lot of top Japanese players like uh, Ayn, uh, Samitu, FAB, and I think Roy. Uh, yeah, trying out the game. And some of the stuff with, uh, I remember, uh, I think Ishwatari said that he was not satisfied with the defensive mechanics. And yeah, that is, I think, true. Because, like, there's, aside from, like, just blocking and stuff, there's not much you can do. There's, you know, aside from block and FD, that's it, you know. The you know, instant block doesn't reduce block stun. And I don't know if it even reduces the uh, pushback. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, all you can do with meter is, uh, you know, block RC. And that has its own issues with, like, the way the block RC is kind of uh, not that beneficial to some characters, you know, compared to, like, a normal dead angle. Uh, and stuff like that. There's no, like, blitz. There's no uh, slashback. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, so, yeah, we'll see, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, I guess, uh, that about it, that's about it, so, um, thanks for watching this, and see y'all soon.